can see the solar eclipse right here. We can. NASA will send the rockets into the moon's shadow. Why is NASA going to send rockets into the moon's shadow? That's a question to ask. It really is. Let's ask NASA, why are you wanting to send rockets into the moon's shadow, NASA? We see you up there. We see you got the shadow on your building, but why, why send rockets into the moon's shadow? Now, there were other times people sent rockets, fired rockets at the moon. There was. But this time, the solar eclipse that's going to happen. Hello, Brian. Um, and welcome, everyone. The solar eclipse that's going to happen on, well, we see it. X marks the spot. We can see it. Oopsie, let me, let, let me lengthen my cord. On April the 8th. It's okay. It's going to be happening. Um... They want to study the shadow of the moon or something. Watch, <laughs> watch live as most metal rocket sets itself on fire. Fire! Oh, they're going to set a rocket on fire for the final time. Let me flip it around, y'all. Let me take it off. Woo! This is making me hot already. I'm already having a hot flash. I already got my shorts on because I was already going to get hot. <laughs> this is this is wild. It's so wild. So, <laughs> okay. It looks like the Ring of Fire. It really does. Hello, Emmett. Open-minded Castle Mermaid. They named the Rockets Project after the Egyptian serpent known as Nemesis of the Sun. Isn't that interesting? Hello there, Frank, honey. Hello, Lala, Ronnie, Sunshine. Sunshine for me, for you. Oh, that's really pretty. I like that. I like that sunshine time for me, for you. Oh, I'm, I'm on the movie. I got myself on here. Y'all can see I got my one camera on here. We're going to take my camera off. I'm going to turn my camera off. Sunshine. Okay. I did pull it up because I thought, you know, that is really interesting. If you have NASA wanting to fire rockets at the moon, they're going to launch sounding rockets. Into the moon shadow. Oh, so um, atmospheric perturbations, perturbations, perturbed, like perturb, perturb, turba, perturbation. <laughs> I can't even say it. That's a weird world. That's a new one for my vocabulary. Perturbations, per, per, perturbed around the eclipse path. <laughs> oh my goodness. The, but they had to call it EPEP, APEP, atmospheric per, perturbations around eclipse path. Sending rockets will, sounding rockets will launch from NASA's Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia to study the disturbances in the ionosphere created when the moon eclipsed the sun. Well, there shouldn't be any disturbances in the ionosphere, should there be? The last place they um, launched it, I think, was White Sands. I actually got to go to White Sands with me and my daughter um, last summer. It was really nice. I remember rolling down the hills of White Sands. It was really nice. Um, you love it. Apep. A I, like, I like that better. Apep. Apep like ASAP, as soon as possible. They are inviting the media. What? They're going to they're gonna in, invite... Oh, this is for Artemis Moon. This is for the moon. Oh, that's 2021. NASA's Mega Moon Rocket. Is that going to be... Is that going to be launched there? What, how can you find the name of it? I would like to see the name of the rockets that they are going to launch what they're going to call them because here we got the eclipse right here if you're just tuning in hello carol honey um yeah the total solar the total solar eclipse photos of an annular total solar eclipse all right that's on october 
that's on October the 14th. So they've already done that before. Okay, so we're not going to look at that anymore. We're not. We're going to look at that because we know that they're going to be doing it. They're going to launch their rockets right into the moon shadow. Into the moon shadow. Hello, Al, honey. Here we go. We're going it. You, you're right across the river. Brian, honey, you right across the river in Kentucky? Well, I think that's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. Let's look at this. Watch um, the most metal rocket sets itself on fire for the final time. Do you think that they're going to do that, Delta IV? Well, I, I want to find the name of the rockets. You said it's after, um, okay, we got Artemis, support of Artemis something, RS-25. Oh, you're from Portland? <laughs> All right, you in Portland, Oregon. That's right. Maybe you might be in another Portland area. You just might here. Look at this. <laughs> they launching their rockets. That's pretty good graphic. It's right there in the shadow of the moon right there. Your, your chat says that we have two watching. Ronnie, honey, re refresh your chat because I think there's like 127 people watching. So that's really good to launch your rockets into the shadow. What do you think they're really doing? Do you, will we see what happens to their rockets when it gets launched into the shadow? Will we be able to see it? Because really, the moon shadow, um, it's going to be really dark. We probably won't even be able to see it um, at all. All we know is there is an eclipse, and they're making a great big deal out of it. And then we've got CERN. We've got CERN that is going to start up also. But they got the Atlas experiment. This is uh, inside CERN. Look at the inside of CERN. CERN's going to get in on it too. So this is um, this is pretty big. It is. What this is a big event because this CERN thing's only going to happen for like a couple days, eighth through the tenth. They said it's like a workshop, but what happens during the workshops? What do they do? Um, it is the first part of Atlas to see the decay. They're going to watch in the decay of the collisions. Look at that. Kind of looks like a coil. Kind of looks like a, um, I don't know what it looks like. Kind of reminds me of a spark plug, but not really it don't. Um, they got a pixel detector. Why do you need a pixel detector? You have to ask yourself, why would they need a pixel detector? detector? Located 3.3 um, centimeters from the LHC beam line. They got a pixel detector. You know that thing called pixels, that movie? Pixels? Why did they do that? Are they really truly looking for pixels? Is that pixels thing not just a movie but really an actual event? Is that, it really sounds strange if you think about it. They're looking for pixels. They're looking for decay. It's a very compact and sensitive. It consists of three different sensors all immersed in a magnetic field parallel to the beam. You can see it. Um, to the beam axis, the inner detector measures the direction, the momentum, and charge of electrically charged particles produced in each proton-proton collision. Look at that. It looks like a, look, they call it a barrel. The main components of the inner detector is the pixel detector, the semiconductor tractor, and the transition radiation tracker. Look at that, you all. What are they, this is really some high-tech stuff that they're really working on. Look at this big pixel detector. I feel like we're watching a movie. I really do. The Atlas, 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 Atlas. Salt. Um, Talus. Look at these guys. They must be really smart. All the wires and stuff. You, you would think, look, it's like 92 million pixels it's incredibly compact. Look at that. 92 million pixels and almost 2,000 detector elements at CERN. Electronic channels. Oh, 92 million channels? Certainly they don't, they don't mean like radio channels or some kind of frequency channels like that. Silicone. Four barrel layers of 1,736 sensor modules. Three discs in each end cap. Look at this. Three discs within each end cap 
with 288 modules. This thing is massive. A semiconductor tracker. This reminds me of the outward layer of an alternator, you know, the, the copper wire, and then sometimes the copper, you know, people refurb refurbish the alternators and it has like this copper, it has the copper and like a, a coating around it. That's what it reminds me of. 4,088 two-sided modules, over 6 million, 6 million implanted readout strips. And six million channels. Who's going to, what is a readout? Jeez, this is CERN. CERN has really got a lot of stuff going on. Six million implanted readout things. Then they got a radiation tracker. Why do they got to do a radiation tracker? You're just tuning in. Phantom, honey, let me, let me, let me tell you something. Block. Yeah. You're going to come on here and tell me to shut up. I'll make sure somebody shuts up by blocking you. So your voice will be shut. How's that? Because I don't, it doesn't matter to me. It doesn't. If you're going to come on here and do that, then I'm going to do that too. Oh, the Apep Egyptian God. Yeah, Apep Egyptian God. We can look up. That's what it was. That's what you meant, right? We can look up Apep. Yeah, Egyptian God. E. Okay. Okay, I got it. I've heard of Apep. I have. Oh, it's the snake. It is the snake. Carol, honey, you so welcome. Yeah. Look at that. The snake god in ancient Egyptian religion. Oh, I don't like to look at it. It's the, oh my gosh, it's the Apophis. It is actually... That's that thing that's coming in 2029, right there, the Apophis thing. It is. Also spelled Apepi, Apep, or Apophis, was the ancient Egyptian deity who embodied darkness and disorder. This is really, oh my gosh, it's the Dark Lord. And was thus the opponent of the light and mot. Ra was the bringer of light and hence the biggest opposer of Apep. The sun god Ra, right? Is Ra the sun god? Oh my gosh. Wow. Apep. Now, so many ships are coming out of the sun. Thousands upon thousands of ships. I want to see Apophis too. Let's see Apophis. 2029. Yeah. Look at that. Uh, oh my gosh. That number. That number right there. That number right there is all I'm going to say. You cannot make this stuff up. There is synchronicity everywhere. That Apophis. Bad, bad, bad. Really, 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 really bad. I'm going to be around when Apophis shows up. I'm going to be around. I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to tell you right now. I am not going anywhere when Apophis shows up. I'm going to be right here, right here. Not going nowhere. 
and that's in 2029. So for those who think I'm going somewhere, I'm not going nowhere. I'm going to be right here. I'm going to be on this earth. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not, I'm not going nowhere. On April the 13th, they say it's a 2.7% that it would hit Earth on April the 13th in 2029. But you know what? If you looked at the one of the things, that little tracker thing, when we were tracking it, I think a few years ago, or last year, it stopped at 2029. There was no other thing because 2030 had came. The asteroid Apophis will visit the Earth. Oh, it's going to visit the Earth. And they want to send a, they want to send a spacecraft to study the near Earth object Apophis. Okay, what if Apophis is coming this time around too? So NASA is sending their rocket up in the sky, three of them, three of them. But what if when they send, okay, this is what it was. Okay, we, we, I, I actually brought it up. Let me, let me see how you look at how Apple Applebrook's, honey. So April the 4th of 2024. APEP. They have a little illustration on here. You can see the moon. It looks like a slither of a moon. It's a conceptual example of what observers might expect to see during the solar eclipse happening on the 8th of 2024. So, um, okay, we're going to see it. Let me scoot back. I got to get it going. Okay, we're going to look at it. Is it stopping? Okay, it's coming. Um, it's 93.7 million miles away. Horus, honey. Horus raw. That's a very good question. A very good question. And thank you for your comment. Is it going to look like that? It's going to get dark and bright. Is there going to be a flash of light that occurs like a flash? Okay, that's what it's going to look like. And NASA's going to send their rockets up there. Here's another visual they got. The satellites flying around and um, uh, changes in the ionosphere in 24 hour period, uh, neutral. What's this? So, oh, this is other maps. Where did I see the one about the rocket? Okay, yeah, this is um, a sounding rocket. This is the uh, animation of a sounding rocket 30 to 300 miles above the Earth's surface. They are too high for um, the balloons. Okay, here it goes. We're going to watch NASA's rocket. This is an animation of NASA's rocket launching it up. It's a sounding rocket. Okay. They went up. They're firing their rockets, kind of like Mr. Musk's rocket. And it somehow got to make its way over there to 800 miles. You think it's going to make it? Oh, I don't think it's going to make it. It makes the sounding rockets the only platforms that can carry out direct measurements in these regions. So you said 93 million miles away, the sun and the moon. That's 30 miles up. Um, and the rocket has separated. Then when they're 300 miles. Okay, it's separating at 300 miles. Okay. Well, um, I didn't see no millions of miles. This is really interesting. It really is interesting. So they're going to send it up from their wallop you can watch it from their wallops page because it's going to be a big wallop it's really going to be it um they got a nice little visual right there they firing it nothing physical can leave the earth only go way up oh my goodness starfire apep is the egyptian god of chaos the god of chaos yeah the god of chaos we're going to have some chaos coming. 
and you got to get ready. But I'm, I'm going to be around in 2029 when Apophis makes its round to the earth. I'm going to be around. A commercial rocket trying to put a satellite into orbit exploded after the liftoff in Japan. We're supposed to be um, looking um, at their rockets, their, their rocket fire. So um, we got Apep, the Egyptian god. The god uh, Ra is uh, the bringer of the light. So we got the light bringer against Apep, the snake. That old serpent who leads the world astray. Let's look at all the images of Apep. How Apep is deep. Well, that's. Now, wait a minute. Is that supposed to be Apep? That looks kind of like Horus. He doesn't look like a serpent. This one looks like a reptilian. This one looks like a reptilian right there with big teeth. Apep, the Egyptian god of darkness. Looks like a dragon, a dragon serpent, um, a dragon serpent. Mm. Apophis, the evil Egyptian god of destruction. Well, destruction's coming. We got destruction coming on the earth, out with the old, in with the new. Look at those eyes. Don't they depict them? Um, who was that snake in a movie that was hissing and talking? Okay, you all, this is kind of red. Hey, you know, they remind, it reminds me of the Naga, the Naga. But I, I don't think it's the Naga either. Wow, look at that one. God Apep. God Apep. Wait a minute, I thought they said there were no such things as other gods. How could we have an Egyptian god if there's only one god? Then who are all these other gods? Are they also ancient gods too? Looks like the pine cone right here. Well, okay, the tree of life or pine cone. You got that and that. Everything you need to know about Apep. Let's look at it. Apep is the deity of chaos out of um, what's the what's the saying something about chaos <sighs> That saying people like to say something out of chaos order out of chaos Okay NASA is going to launch their rockets up there in the sky and um, After Apep Yeah, thank you TQ Tenton Quant Quarantino Yeah, I like that T Quentin Connor Quarantino we got CERN getting in on the action too. What is CERN going to be doing? You can see the CERN's accelerator thing right here. But look at these great big circles. And then they have other circles. And then they have other circles, other circles. They got it all going on at CERN. They do. They got Alice. Hi, Rad Matt. They got, who is this? Alina, who is Alina? E.D., I mean A.D., Anno Domini, um, Booster, okay. <laughs> um, Toph, reminds me of Thoth. Lear, P.S., Isolide, Rex, T-Rex. Awake, they got the awake thing, and they got the north CMS. Um, you can see how big CERN is. I mean, it's all over the place. A pixel detector looks really complicated. We got the uh, Egyptian god. Okay, so why do they want to launch it? And why do we got Apophis? And we got the three days of darkness. We had Joseph this morning in here. Um, Apep emerged from Ra's umbilical, umbilical cord, it says. 
um, Apeth emerged from Raw's umbilical cord at the time of the latter's birth. The Romans, on the other hand, referred to Apep as he who was spat out. The epithet runs parallel with his origin story found in a different text, which states that Apep was born out of the saliva of the goddess Neith's, Neith's saliva. Neith was venerated as the creator goddess of everything in the universe. Additionally, she was primarily in charge of wisdom, motherhood, water, childbirth, war, etc. In this account, Apep is seen as a sibling of Sobek, Ra, and Tutu. Wow, did you ever hear of her? Neith was venerated as the creator goddess of everything in the universe. What are you doing, Neith? Okay, there's Neith right there. Origins and stuff. I probably don't hear much about her. You have to ask yourself, why don't you hear much about Neith? Oh, Egyptian goddess of creation and war. Um, patroness of the Sias and Egyptian goddess. Okay, so we're going to get back to it. NASA's launching rock rockets into the moon. And there were, like in stories, there's like um, some old books where they're firing rockets at the moon. And Elon, Elon Musk also launched a rocket at the moon. But NASA's ro launching a rocket at um, the moon shadow. Rockets launch at the moon. Musk. I'm going to see Musk. Because he did. He did it. Look at this. Um... Starship explosion. SpaceX Starship launch highlights from the second flight of Elon Musk's moon. Why does he um, launch his rocket on the moon? Look how look how it arched like that it lart it arched across the sky in a big arch well where did it go did it just go straight down went up and then it came down but he was supposed to do it he his space his spacex rocket crashed into the moon is what it did crashed into the moon we're supposed to get back to the the eclipse this looks really interesting my goodness look at look at that look how wild that looks that is a lot of fire power behind that rocket progress in the second launch of a giant moon something okay so um nasa's launching rockets at the moon three of them um and they're gonna watch um for the devil's comet's gonna I wonder if they're going to send a rocket to the Devil's Comet. Because the Devil Comet, I wonder if it's going to be around the same time the Devil's Comet will be passing through. And one of those sound, they're going to get, an, uh, they're going to get a signal from the Devil's Comet is what they're going to do. When they launch their sounding rockets up there, they're going to hear a message from the Devil. But you got the, the God of Chaos. Okay. What, what do you need to know? Why, why, do we, why do we need to know what NASA had to say about the April 8th eclipse? Um, um, I'm going to be here when um, Apophis comes. I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm going to be here when Apophis comes. Hmm. When it comes, it's going to visit the earth. So they have till 2020, was it 2029 is when they were going to put the implants in the head in 2029, 2029, 2029, WEF, bring rest of humans on 
online, I can't type it well, online 6G. Let me see if they've got it. Okay. Okay, you got it? You can, um, how... Um, well, um, I wanted to see about, um, by 2025, 42 billion connected devices globally. It's only natural that these devices numbers grow. Um, deep learning, ubiquitous human computer interface, 6G, rapid development, VR, AR, human beings are on the threshold of being the ubiquitous human-centric intelligence era. 6G is believed to be indispensable cornerstone for efficient interaction between humans and computers. They will bring the human, the physical, and the digital worlds together. Um, we're going to end a new era. The brain is the battlefield of the future. It's your brain is where the battle is going to take place, just like Joyce Meyer's Battlefield of the Mind, more or less. Um, okay, so um, we're not going to look at that. Um, did they say that humans will all wear a... Let's hear what Soap, Smope, Soap, Soap said. Soaps, Smope, Soap, Snopes. Somebody made a false claim. Um, a people's voice said that um, they declared 2023 2030 fashion will become completely obsolete and humans will be vegan and they will um, they'll only be able to um, they said in 2019 humans will only be permitted to buy three items of clothing per year and will be prohibited from buying a consuming meat an influential organization known for fostering public and private whatever they're going to create a totalitarian this has been this has been said it's going they said it's false. They said the WEF never said that um, they never said the purpose of whatever it was. They never said that um, humans will only be permitted to buy three items a year and they never said that humans will all wear uniforms by 2030. According to Snopes, it's not the WEF said fashion will be abolished and humans will all wear a uniform. He's going to reduce clothing purchases to between eight and three per year. So Snopes says, we got to hear what he said about it. It was under the future of urban consumption in a 1.5 degrees Celsius world. It was not tied to the WEF in any way. The organization neither funded nor even the research or participated in any capacity. It was something called a C40 ARUP University of Leeds funding from University of Leeds and City Foundation. A C40 with four, 100 mayors around the street, the seat, something. The textile energy... Okay, you, it's, it, it causes you to um, carbon. Okay, it's just carbon. Um, they predicted the bridge collapse. Did they? Okay, I didn't know they did. So we don't want to get to that. We got Atlas. The CERN is going to be up online. NASA is going to launch a rocket. 
three rockets. We got the Devil Comet coming. And a total solar eclipse. We got the accelerator reports, the proton, protons or Easter eggs. Let's hope for both on April the 8th at CERN. They're going to do it around the same time. They were on track for their restart. You look at this nice little um, graphs and stuff like that. Don't they look nice? Um, slowly. They, for the first time, they will, um, they're going to get ready. They, they have to get ready with their stuff. And I, I can't really go into that at all. I'm not supposed to go into it. Um, this is not good. Let's go to Indiso. Fupu, a fupai, fupai. The future nuclear hadronic physics at the CERN AD, called the Fu Fi 2024. It will take place at the Stefan Meyer Institute in Vienna from April the 8th to April the 10th. Um, is what it's going to do. They're just going to have a workshop or something. It looks like they're going to have a workshop. I don't know of anything. Does any? Where did you see that um, they're going to be launching something? Um, did anyone see that? Um, yeah. You've seen portals open. I've closed portals. I have. Um, they're hurting. They're, they're going to hunt for... Okay. Okay, they're going to hunt for ghost particles. Okay, this is what they're going to do. They're going to hunt for the ghost particles. How CERN plans to search for better understanding of the universe. They're going to go Ghostbusters. Who are you going to call Ghostbusters? They're looking for the ghost particles. Well, that would be black mat dark matter. Um, the future circular collider. Okay, we want to see, they want the hidden particles, search for hidden particles, the ship, they're searching for the ship. Um, it's a potentially paradigm shifting experiments that could really drive us into a whole new regime of knowledge, of not just about our universe, but about our position. Much of what we have assumed now may be different. All right, so we got the CERN. Ghost particles. Um, all of what we are able to see, let's read this. With our naked eye from space, stars, planets compose 5% of the actual matter in the universe. The other 95% is a split between 26% dark matter and 69% dark energy. How can you have dark matter and dark energy as two different things, really? This is making me have a hot flash. Dark matter and dark energy. There's the number, look, there's the number 17 again, you all. There's something about the number 17. Scientists recognize 17, 17 different particles to explain when the universe, what the universe is made of. There is the number 17 again. This 17 has been popping up a lot within the past week. Huh. Okay, they're going to look for it. Look, okay, here we got this. The ship project will be working alongside CERN's experiment, including the Large Hadron Collider. And the construction of the ship's new underground facilities will start in 2026. Well, according to this, the world will still be intact for CERN to construct their ship's underground facilities um, with the first experiments taking place around 2032. Well, according to this, they're expecting to be around. The world is not going to be obliterated, according to CERN, because um, they're still going to be here in 2032. And they're going to have something still in the 2040s. And they won't be at its full potential until 2070. So who is telling the truth? Is the world going to end? 
Or is it just going to keep going and going and going and going and going? It's been going and going and going and going and going. It really has. I wonder how many humans will be left on the earth during 2026, 2032, 2040s, and 2070. I don't know. I don't. Let me just get around here. We've got the other eclipse. That's the lunar eclipse, the total cell cellular. They said you're going to have some cellular. Um, you could have cellular outage if you're in the path of these right here. Uh, in the path of totality, you could have a cellular outage. We've got this uh, big, large thing right here. We've got the Florida Mag 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 Lab Magnetic Facility right here, the Mag Lab, the National High Magnetic Field Laboratory in Florida. It is massive, and we just so happen to have lots of lightning strikes just off the south, right off the coast of Tallahassee. We got the New Madrid in that area too. We got a lot of activity happening. You got this right here along the New Madrid, and you got NASA who's going to literally fire rockets probably right into the path of this moon shadow where you hit totality going up here. They're going to fire it into the moon shadow, the APEP. That's what they're going to do. The solar eclipse to see NASA rockets into the moon shadow that <laughs> they're going to hear something they sound rockets see how it sounds in the moon shadow why are they going to fire the rockets why are they going to fire the rockets and why does cern have to be doing stuff also what is cern's job in it does cern have a a job in it because they got high-tech high-tech equipment they do they got it you might like it you might like um they got some plans for a next generation particle accelerator a new chapter um they restart they're going to restart they're going to smash the records that's 20 that was in 20 15, they're going to smash the records that they previously smashed, and they smashed it with the God particle. Um, I'm going to sit down for it, and I'm going to stand. I'm going to look at the questions. I'm going to look at the comments. What's going on in here? CERN is trying to break through to other dimensions. Um, I thought they did break through in an experiment and a, a rectangular shadowy door open and um, there was these scientists there you hear the story they said it was make-believe and this great big shadow figure came through is like around 10 feet tall and the scientists who saw it came through extreme fear evil if they felt extreme evil energy extreme fear from what came through that opening now they said that this was not real they said it was uh, just all make-believe it didn't happen it got fact-checked but according to the make-believe story they got fact-checked they saw this great big dark shadowy figure and it was pure evil energy and um, that um, dark shadowy figure said that um, your knowledge of our existence, your knowledge of us now threatens our existence, and they were going to be back. And I think every bit of the scientists died. They all died somehow. That was like the pure evil energy they felt when they opened something up. Because they found out, I guess, about them from the other dimension. Mama, Mama, Texas. Stranger Things, the plot is a Scooby. Um, well, there is an X marks the spot and then total darkness. Um, yeah, this is some, um, if, you, if you do that April, the April um, episode, there is a um, playlist on the YouTube channel that we got on this channel called the Eclipse, the April the 8th Eclipse. 
and it talks about the episode um, eclipse over um, let me show you this okay right here so Easter Island will also have an eclipse in 2024 on Easter Island just like a look at this it's good you're gonna see another ring of fire but this time it's where the big giants are Easter Island's nearly 900 Moai were carved from volcanic basalt by ancient inhabitants this is what's going to happen 26 2600 Miles away west of Santiago, Chile, Easter Island, um, Rapa Nui is one of the fantastic travels. This is where the eclipse is going to happen in 2024. Okay, this one is, yeah, this is on, oh, wow, you all, look at this. It's here. The remarkable, mysterious setting that you'll witness and equally awe-inspiring Celestial convergence, the alignment of the sun, moon, and earth. Oh, wow, this is the sun, moon, and earth will create an annular ring solar eclipse on October the 2nd of 2024 over a span of three and a half hours. The lunar silhouette will intrude onto the solar disk and then it will slide away, culminating in a striking ring of fire in the sky lasting more than six minutes you'll also have a chance to see whatever um the southern sky celestial show pieces or whatever so this is also going to happen this is the grand finale they call this right here episode um two there's also going to be a lunar eclipse and i can't remember where that was going to be happen at either but this right here this is this is the grand finale you all the sun, the moon, the earth with the annular solar ring eclipse going to look like a ring of fire. And it's right over Easter Island. What if something comes through that ring of fire? Really, what if something does? Who, who comes through the ring of fire? You know of any um, deity that would come through a ring of fire? Ancient God. An ancient um, God comes comes through a ring of fire i'm going to put it in there comes through a ring um eclipse ec ring of fire ring of fire Let's see it is i mayans the mayans they'll have another one in 2039 this happened, happened um, one happened on the 14th. I want to know. I, I'm, this is what they're going to look like. It's look, it does look like it's on fire. It's on fire. For Easter Island. If this happens, that means the world's not going to get destroyed. And you might be around to see this one, too. You just might. Hello, Shauna Tucker. Uh, hello, if there's any other, all the moderators on here, hello. Um, the 4 2024 is 22 years, 22 DD, 9111111111. you got the ring of fire. A burning ring of fire. You went down, 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 and the flames went her higher. It burned, 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 the ring of fire. Look at this. It reminds me of Sauron. It reminds me of Sauron's uh, ring of fire. His eye, Sauron in the Lord of the Rings. Lord of the Rings, the rings of fire. Sauron, the eye. I'm going to see his eye. He's got a big eye. He's the god. Look at that, how they put his big eye in between those two horns. Sauron. The eye moves and it watches. He had to get um, fire. 
Look at the fire in the sky. The volcanoes. He's the Dark Lord Sauron comes through. He's the Dark Lord of Chaos. The Dark Lord of... He is like the Dark Lord of Chaos, right? Sauron is a Lord of Chaos. He said, build me an army worthy of my something. And you can see at this time, the land is practically demolished. It looks like this is in that great big volcanic area. They went slaughtering people in the Lord of the Ring. Well, look at that one. There's the ring, the Lord of the Ring. And his ring got, his ring got, his finger got chopped off. They chopped his finger off with the sword. Poof, knocked it right off. This could be a god of chaos. Yeah. Gina, why are you talking about that? Um, destroy your... Somebody named Atlantis. The phoenix is the winged serpent. Um, it's in lightning. That, um, they had to, I, I, I'm, I'm trying to think of how, how could he gain strength? He had to have a lot of, um, terrible things happen on the earth in order for him to be brought into full power. In order for him to come through, there had to be a whole lot of chaos happening on the earth. It had to get really bad before he could even... I believe come through. I, he wanted to come through, but they, the, um, they defeated something, and his eye closed up. The portal literally is shaken, and then it closed up, and he had to go back into the black hole in which he was trying to come out of. But they were trying to prepare the way for him. They were, and then um, when the dark forces started losing, it's when he, he had to go. He got sucked back into the other dimension. He thought he was going to come right out. He did. He had his dark, dark army here already, but he couldn't get out yet. This is his big eye. Flaming eye. Okay, so we got all this stuff happening, and they're going to they're gonna fire a rocket into the Lord of the Ring right there. Three rockets. Why three? Why three sounding rockets? Yeah, why do you got to do three rockets with Apep, God of Apophis? You got the Apophis and the devil. You got the devil's coming. The devil's coming and Apophis is coming. I'm going to be here. I'm going to be here when Apophis comes based on this number right here. I'm going to be here. It's going to come close to the earth and make a visit. But will will the destroyer come before then? Will um will Nibiru come before then? The giant asteroid Apophis is no longer predicted. They've changed their mind. They no longer predict it coming. To ignite the lightning when God um, cast Lucifer down. Just relax and breathe deep. Um, says um, Carol, honey. You got to breathe deep. Because it's warm wood also. And the waters became bitter. That's right. Uh, let's look at the animation. No, we don't want to look at that because it might be somebody else's thing. Let's see. I can't, I'm not going to look at their animation. I'm not. We're not going to do it, you all. You got to, don't worry about it. We're, you might, you might still be around. You really might still be around. But why did they call it? 
NASA rockets. NASA's rocket is called, let's look it up. How did NASA's, NASA has rockets. There's symbolism everywhere, all over the place. It's like, get ready. Get ready, you all. It's happening. The sound in them, they got the wallops. They're going to do a wallop of a, why do they have to name it wallops? Wall operations. Wall operations. Beyond the ice wall operations flight. NASA's program named after the serpent deity. It's named after the serpent deity from the Egyptian mythology, nemesis of the sun deity Ra. The sun deity Ra. Okay. The sun deity Ra. Hold on one second. Gina, what you got to look? I got to look. Let me do it. The sun's deity Ra. I'm going to look here because he was like... um. I'm going to find it. Um, NASA. I can't find his face. This is not nice. His face is gone. Let me do this. I'm going to come back over here for the Lord of the Rings. We got the Lord of the Rings. We want to come to the YouTube. Gina, your watch history is off. I know it's off. Let me come over here. We got the solar eclipse. We got a playlist. This is our playlist. Um, it's called the total solar eclipse. This is really eye opening right here. It is. Um, I wanted to look into the videos. It was a live. It was um, NASA's. I wanted to look in the playlist like he is angry. We got to go to the NASA's products if we can find a NASA playlist on here. Where is the NASA playlist? Oh, here we go. NASA's playlist. Um, there was a video. I wonder if they, if they put it in here that he was angry. There he is, right there. He's angry. 1744. There's that number 17 again. There's the number 17 again. He's angry. This is the sun. This is his, and he is angry. You can see his eyes in the inverted mode up here. You can see his eyes in the inverted mode up there. The grayscale and the inverted. He is angry, and he's inside the sun. Let me move this. You see his eyes? Can you see his eyes? Let, let's get a little closer. You can see his eyes right there. He's angry. He spewed, spewed fire out of his mouth. He did. Um, he said something. Um, he's angry, you all. That's the only words that are coming to my mind. He's angry. He's not happy. He's not happy about what has happened. He's angry. Is he angry at me? No. Is he angry at you? No. He's angry at something that has happened and that has been happening. He's angry. You can see his eyes directly beneath me. Right there's one eye. 
You can even see the pupil of his eyes. You can see the pupil of his eyes, one right there and one right there. You can see his nose as it goes down. He's angry. I've never seen, um, I'm just telling you right now, I have never seen nor have I documented a face like this on the sun itself. And um, I was getting ready to push that button. I'm not done yet. I am not done yet. You all, I'm not. What's up with the number 17? I, I don't know. There's something up with the number 17. I've been seeing it a lot. The, um, this video right here, let me see if I can close out that video. It's surely it's got a close out thing on it. Okay. Close that out. When I, um, it's exactly 17 minutes and 44 seconds. The number 17 symbolic one, seven, um, spiritual meaning. The number um, 17 and its significance. The number 17 is what I refer to as the immortality number. With the power of this number, you leave behind a legacy to your family, community, greater world because you are intrigued. Okay. Um, enlightenment, spiritual awakening, attainment of spiritual knowledge. Use your intuition. Um, new beginning, success, motivation, independence. It uh, extends beyond the numerical value, a gateway to spiritual awakening and self-realization, divine guidance, support in the realm of the angelic communication. The number 17 is interpreted from a message from probably above. Um, it encompasses hope, enlightenment, the soul's purpose in many spiritual traditions. It's seen as the number represents journeys towards spiritual awakening and manifestations. Um, spiritual transcendence, self-discovery, soul mission, powerful reminders, focus on your spiritual growth. Stay the path. Stay the path, angelic realm. Um, you are in a state of an alignment with both physical and spiritual worlds. Alignment can bring you clarity, insight, a sense of purpose, spiritual awakening. Spiritual awakening. A time of conscious awareness and intent. Great influence now. Symbolism. Okay, so that's, um, there you go. Spiritual awakening. It's, it's, a, it's a message. It is a message. It's been popping up so much lately is what it's been doing. You just tuning in. Hello. Yeah. Um, so, um, no, the NASA's firing rockets at the moon. Well, um, we know that there's large ships that come out of the sun also. Like a big light ships coming out of the sun. Eye opening ships. Um, the sun was sending out an SOX symbol. So that was one year ago. He was angry. Very angry. Right? That is that playlist. Let me let me get that off of there. I'm flipping it around. I'm done running my mouth. You all I'm going on over an hour long. I feel like I ain't said nothing. I haven't said anything except NASA's launching. We got the ring of fire and we got the, the Lord Sauron, the Lord of the rings, the Lord of the rings, the fire, the portals. He got sucked back into the place. He didn't get to fully materialize and he got sucked back into the other realm. We got the biggest rings right here. We got the great big rings. Everything goes around in a circle. The Lord of the rings. The Lord of the Rings. They got to make it precise. They do. They got to make it look like a great big eye. 
like a partial eye with a pupil in the middle of it. Kind of looks kind of like a flower of life too. Yeah, I'm going to go. I am going to go. You're going to have another solar eclipse and it's going to happen on Easter Island. Right there. Let's get to Easter Island. Annular eclipse. You know that they're going to have people from around the world going to go for this. Uh, grand finale right here, whatever energy is going to come from it, because you know there's going to be some energy coming from this at Easter Island, the path of totality at Easter Island for the solar eclipse. Yeah, so um, you're not going to look up. Don't look up. I'm not going to look up either. It's April the 8th when it's going to be happening. But I tell you what, um, they're sure they sure are making a great big deal about the April the 8th. There's something going on. And um, NASA is concerned because they're going to send their rockets and see if they can hear something from the moon shadow. If the moon shadow is going to speak to them since they're sounding rockets, they want to hear if the shadow has something to say. Actually, what if the shadow is the dark energy or the dark matter that's up there and it's going to speak to them in the darkness? That's why they got to get their sounding devices up there. They got to have three of them. So if one fails, the other two can hear. They got to have backup for backup. So they're going to have to hear them what the moon shadow has to say because it's probably the dark matter or the dark energy and they're not, they're, they're going to bring it in. They're going to bring it in. They're going to bring in <laughs> the dark energy. They want to bring, they got to bring in their dark lord, the dark lord Sauron with the eye, the ring of fire, the lord of the rings, the lord of the rings right there. Boom. No, it's really, it's, it's really um, spiritual. I'm, I'm not going to downplay it. It's big time spiritual. As the, we could say esoteric. It's magical. It's all of this kind of stuff happening because this is poof, big time, big time, big time. Is it like over there like that? It's, it's big time. It is. You got this spiritual, 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 spiritual connection. This must be a great big area. Frequency base, probably one of the biggest on Earth. One of the biggest. I'm going to go. Um, I'm done talking. I am. So um, with that being said, hello. Wherever you are in any part of the world. Hello. From my heart to yours. Love you. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. It is 9.17. Oh my gosh. Look at that. Is that number 17 again? 917 9 <laughs> Okay, you are you got it? Is not you got it. You better pay attention to the number 17. Get yourself on the path. Don't get off the path that you're on. <laughs> oh my gosh, you cannot make it up. You cannot um Thank you for your comments. Thank you, moderators. Um, yeah. If you have not subscribed to this channel, please consider <laughs> subscribing. <laughs> if you have subscribed, thank you. 17 synchronicities all day for you too, Trisha, honey. Yes. Yes. Um, thank you for joining you all. And... Um, it's it's good to come together on here. It really is. It um, it makes life not so um, law when you can come together, even if, even if it's over social media, even if it's not in person. It's good to connect because you can feel the energy. You can energy is just like travels all over the place, and that's great. Yeah, um, sardines or anchovies. Well, actually, some people like them both. They do. They probably eat them every single day. I'm just saying they might eat them every day and to each their own, right? 
Have a, a wonderful rest of your day. You all, please give this video a thumbs up. Thank you again, moderators, and love you. Good night.